Hey everyone, I'm Will and in this video I want to share with you a simple and effective workflow for creating dramatic black and white or monochrome images. I've got a raw file here, it's an 800mm perspective of the mountains in New Zealand and I'll run through with you some of my most common techniques and methods for creating this type of result. If you enjoy this video, there's a longer course I've made and there's a pretty ridiculous discount. So just follow the link below if you want to check out the monochrome tutorial. All right, enough of that. Let's just get into it, eh? So I've opened up the RAW file in Photoshop and if you're familiar with Photoshop at all, you'll know that Camera Raw pops up or ACR and this is basically our RAW developer. Very similar to Lightroom, so if you're a Lightroom user, no worries at all, you'll be able to apply pretty much everything that we do here as well. So just looking at the image itself, you're probably thinking, okay, far out, that's incredibly underexposed. If we look at our histogram up in the top right hand corner, uh, it's not significantly underexposed at all. It's just certainly not a bright image. And one of the reasons is, as you, as you can see, it's 800 mil on that F14, 500th of a second ISO 100. Now, just knowing the capability of my camera, I knew that I'd be able to jump into here and adjust the exposure pretty easy. And I'm only going up one and a half stops, which is not major at all for the Sony camera that I'm using. Uh, I've shot it at F14 to get that depth of field at 800 millimeters. It's obviously incredibly compressed. Uh, so the depth of field drops off quite a lot. So I've closed it down a little bit to F14. Uh, 500th of a second, which really you wouldn't want to go too much slower than that at 800 mil. Just leaving the ISO at 100, knowing that I can just pull up the details here. Having a look, 800 millimeter, uh, one of the main issues you're going to have, this is a 100 to 400 using a two times extender. One of the issues is that you can get soft images. Now, a lot of people will instantly say that's just the extender's fault. Now, not necessarily. One of the main issues you'll have with shooting such a long focal range is all that atmosphere, all the air that you're compressing, and there's a lot of moisture and heat waves in the air um, that we can't necessarily see. Once we compress that with the lens, it just can render the image soft. So that is one of the things, because I know people are probably wondering about the whole 800 thing. But this one, uh, the air was relatively crisp, and I'm quite happy with the sharpness here considering it's 800 mil but I've definitely had times in the past where it just wasn't possible because of the the atmospheric distortion and everything um, and even at 400 mil that can happen all right let's just get into it so pulling up the brightness is my first thing what I look for when shooting a black and white or a mono is nice contrast throughout the image and that's what we've got here we've got all these areas of dark and then light. So we've got dark off to the right in the shadows, then light off that snow drift. That was what led me to create this photo in the first place was that epic snow drift. But the fact that there's light, dark, light, dark scattered all the way through, that's gonna make a good mono. If you have an image that's 80% darks or shadows and then just a bright sky, for example, typically won't make a good monochrome shot. You really wanna have those scattered areas of contrast throughout. So brightening the image up initially, I might even just leave it about there for now. Now, if you look at our histogram, it's just one big mid-tone, really. We want to have high contrast. That's what makes mono so powerful. Now, before we go bother doing anything with contrast, uh, I'm going to actually create the monochrome or the black and white. Now, the reason why I'm not committing to saying mono or black and white is because we might add a hint of color to this anyway. So the you can obviously push the black and white button in the top right-hand corner. That instantly renders it black and white or you can just drop off the vibrance and saturation and then what there's no real right or wrong to be honest not what i've seen for now let's just pull the vibrance and saturation off introduce some contrast so we can already see we're starting to get a semi-decent result there's a lack of light though isn't there we'll look at our histogram again not much on that right hand side so i'm going to introduce some whites that's pulling up all those areas of light white is light so i often i quite often work with the whites just to boost anywhere that has some natural light on it might do some slight dehazing obviously there was quite a bit of haze in there i don't mind that because it's just atmosphere and shows depth however in this image in particular we're going to benefit from a dehaze is like a micro contrast adjustment so you can see what it's doing there with as far as the blacks go it's dropping those down which is doing us wonders for the image now that we've done that, we're obviously a black and white now, but let's have a look at introducing a slight blue tone, which I like to do. Just gives the image a silvery look. To do that, I'll often jump down into the color grading 
and basically the mid-tone shadows and highlights not so much the highlights because there's not many but i'm going to spin this around into a, a blue tone now i'm going to hold shift so i can do this gradually and just pull that down probably about there and then i'll do the same for the shadows probably a slightly darker blue and drop that in the reason why i like doing this it just gives the the image i just feel i like that silver tone there's something about it that cool blue it's obviously quite subtle on first appearance. You probably think it was a black and white image, uh, but I just prefer the look. Now I've accidentally bumped that. So to reset, I'll just double click and, and put that back. So I won't bother doing anything with the highlights there. There's a dust spot up in the sky to remove that. I'm just going to grab the spot removal tool, highlight that, and hopefully it fixes it up. Good, command zero to zoom back out. All right, there's a few other little steps here that I'll show you. I'm gonna jump into the curves and just work with contrast again, but doing a little bit more manually. I'm gonna pull the lights up. You can see what that, that's doing there, similar to what we did with the whites before. And then as far as contrast goes, it's doing the opposite with your darks, pulling those down. And now we're getting that nice separation. Just trying to separate all the tones. Remember, we had one big mid-tone which meant the entire image looked very similar. Now I'm really trying to separate dark and light, create that contrast, which is gonna help create depth in the shot. There's a bit of vignetting up in that top left-hand corner, uh, which somewhat stands out. I probably should have selected the profile correction. It's not doing too much anyway, to be honest, but we'll leave it there for now. Close that down. Uh, I might get a grad filter and even though that vignette's there, I wouldn't mind, oh, sorry, the, yeah, the vignetting, I wouldn't mind dragging and making the sky just a bit darker in general. So with a grad filter, I'm going to pull the exposure down like so. And the whole point of doing this is just to push the eye where we want it to go. You can see down the bottom end, we have darkness that leads up into light. I want to replicate in the top section of the image. And I do this in almost all of my photos, just a very subtle darkening of the top part of the sky. All right, now, lastly, just some local adjustments to boost the light in areas of interest, which is basically this ridge line, anywhere where this snow drift is. To do that, I'm going to use an adjustment brush. This is my favorite tool. If you've seen me process before, you know I love the adjustment brush. I'm putting some white on this brush, and I'm just running that down areas that have some light on it, some luminosity. And this is allowing me to just boost that only and not worry about affecting anything else. If you do exposure, you're gonna bring everything up. It's not going to look right. Lucky last, on a telephoto image, it's hard to show any actual sunlight coming in because we're shooting such a small area. It's really nice though to have a reference for light. It just helps draw the eye in. We already do have that partially. We know that the light is coming from the left, just the way it's lighting up the land. I just want to emphasize that the light source is coming in from the left. So I'm going to do a bit of a bleed effect with light coming in. Using a brush again, I'll throw some exposure on here and the tool is rehazing. So I love to rehaze and just create a, a soft portion of light. More or less got it first go there. Obviously you apply it and then you can tweak it. So the tip is rehazing. You can see what that's doing on the left. And I just feel like that really helps draw the eye in and just emphasizes that I want people to be drawn into this middle area. Now, obviously you do that with your composition, the natural light in the landscape, and then just slightly emphasizing that there. Uh, lastly, if you wanted to as well, you could obviously using an adjustment brush, perhaps do some texture and just apply that to just some of these ridge lines just to help give those a little bit more definition. But this is something that you're not necessarily going to see too much in the online world. When it comes to printing or viewing this bigger than you'd most likely obviously be able to see these details and enjoy it more. Clarity is another one you could have a play with, but just go easy on that because it can look quite grungy uh, relatively quickly. So there we are. If we do a before and after, that's what we started off with. There we are there. And I'll push Q, so the side-by-side -side perspective. Relatively simple. It's just having the right uh, subject matter to work with with the right light. I don't like blue at all. 
So I knew when I was shooting this, because of all that contrast there and the fact that there was a bit of blue in the background, I knew shooting this one that this is gonna make a great monochrome. Uh, but that's basically my workflow for creating monos, or it gives you a good idea anyway. There's a few other ways you can do, do it as well. Uh, personal preference and every image is going to be a little bit different but that gives you a good overview so hopefully you've maybe picked a few tips up there that you can apply to your own images um, but to me it's got to be the specific scenario the right light the right subject matter and uh, this was a pretty special moment being out in the high winds I uh, really love just being amongst the elements like that and it was just so humbling watching that snow drift just blast off into the air anyway guys hope you enjoyed uh, the obligatory like and subscribe and comment would be greatly appreciated. And again, if you want a longer version where I break down a few more images, just check out the link below for a big sale on the monochrome course. All right. Cheers, guys.